hello and i was about to say good morning but just hello just because it's good morning for me i don't know what time it is for you but anyway so hi and welcome back to today's video and this is part one of two for logical operators in sql so yeah uh there are three more two two three tutorials that came before this so the first one is just showing you guys how to load your csv onto mysql then there are two more tutorials i covered like introduction to the basics of sql uh, comparison operators and now we are covering logical operators and as you can see i'm going to break it down into part one and two so for part one we're going to cover like mm, we're going to cover in and we are going to cover between so yeah, in case you don't have my sql on your machine and you want to use it go to the first video that shows you how to upload uh, csv onto your my sql environment on the description i've linked a tutorial that helped me download my sql hope you find it useful otherwise guys let's get into the video so the first question we're going to answer select all countries that start with the letter k so here we're going to use uh, the logical operator like. So like can help you do a number of things, yeah? And one of them is, let's say you're looking for countries that start with letter K or you're just looking for something that you can't remember what it's called, but you're so sure it starts with K or it starts with S O, you can use like. Also, if you only remember the last letter, you can use like. Also, if you only remember the second letter, you can also use like by indicating i know the second letter is s so there is a syntax for that so like can do a lot including if you know you're looking for the word stacy and you know at some point there is ce there's a way you can use like to generate all the words all the data points that have ce somewhere along the whole string yeah so for this particular example, I'm just going to look at how to uh, to look for <clears throat> look for probably a string that starts with a certain letter, ends with a certain letter, and yeah, feel free to go Google how else you can use like. That's my challenge to you. Once you figure it out, yeah, let me know down in the comments below. Like, oh, what did you find? Uh, if you actually get to use it in a project or at work, how was it convenient? So yeah, I'd recommend using uh, W3Schools. Just go to W3Schools and Google like in SQL and you can know about it. So anyway, let's get into actually answering this question. Select all countries that start with the letter K. So of course I chose K because <laughs> I'm Kenyan and Kenya starts with K. So select all from country data where country like so please note uh like is case case sensitive yeah so what does that mean if i wrote uh, a small k it would look for a small k if i wrote a capital k it would look for a capital k so yeah let's let's run this and see what happens Okay, so as you can see, I put the position wrongly. I put the, okay, for, for this specific question, I put the position at the wrong place. So if you want the first position to be K, K has to come first, then the percentage sign comes later, yeah? So this indicates K is first, yeah? And there you go. So we have Kazakhstan, Kenya, among others. So those are the five countries on this list that start with the letter K. So yeah, uh, you probably already know how to answer the second question because I kind of already do it, but yeah, let's do it again. So select 10 countries that end with the letter Y. So the only thing that makes it a bit different is we want 10. I don't even know if there are 10. So now instead of starting with K, we want it to end with Y, yeah? And let's do capital Y, then we do small Y and see what happens. So yeah, let's just put limit 10. In case there are more than 10, it will limit it to 10. If they're less than 10, all of them will be printed out. So yeah, let's run this and see what happens. Hmm. Okay, so we have 
a good number. How many are those? Those are seven. Okay, so those are the countries that start that end with the letter Y. But let's put a small Y and see what happens because like is case sensitive and don't know if it's different in my SQL, but if you wanted to make like ignore okay yeah mm, i like that valid disposition mm, okay yeah so yeah that's it if you want to get the first if you want to get the last maybe we can just do an extra one so let's say we want to get one that has al somewhere along it's string yeah so it would still be the same select all from country data where country like why so now instead of let's say al and then we put yeah so what does this mean it's going to look for all countries that have a and l following each other somewhere in the string so like italy should qualify because italy has a and l let's see okay so there's Albania, Algeria, Italy is here, Malawi, you see. So yeah, in case you're looking for something and you don't remember what exactly it is, but you have a rough idea of it starts with this, it ends with this. No, it has this in somewhere in the middle. You can easily use like to pull it out. This could be maybe uh, product codes, yeah? Uh, each product has a unique way of starting. So if it's like a food product, it has like FD at the start or FD at the end. If it's a clothing product, it has like LC at the start or LC at the end, yeah? So if you want to do analysis just around the clothes or just around the products, you could easily like start with this at the end, at the start or end with this, of course, at the end, yeah. So that's one way, but I'm so sure whatever database you're using would be built in a way that you can connect your transaction table, which probably has the unique identifiers to, <clears throat> to a dimensions table that will say what type of product it, that is. But yeah, I was just trying to give you guys an example of how like could be relevant for you. And honestly, I don't use it a lot. I don't I don't choose it a lot like uh, both my personal projects and like at work I, I don't really use it a lot but it, you never know like the whole point is to really get a good grasp of fundamental have an idea of what is there so one day when you're faced with a, you're faced with a certain challenge a certain problem you never know how like will come through so that's why I didn't ignore it this for the fact that I don't really use it a lot. So yeah, the next two uh, logical operators that we're going to cover is in and between. So select data points uh, for the following countries only, okay? So if you've watched uh, some of my previous tutorials, we've used in kind of a lot, but yeah, let's do it again. So we are selecting all from country data. Where country in the you need to put it in brackets, and those are four countries we're interested in. And uh, I believe I've talked about this before. So, when you're accessing uh, uh, a data point inside a variable inside a column, yeah. You need to be very intentional. Not intentional, you need to be aware of the data type, yeah. So if you're accessing a string, yeah, when you're calling the string, you have to put it in a, an appropriate data type, which is string, I mean, which is string. So let me just finish copy pasting this. So as I explain, I flow with the explanation. Okay, so as I was saying, you have to be very conscious of the data type, yeah? 
So like here, we are accessing specific countries. We want the data points for these four countries. And country is in data type string. So you have to make sure when you're calling Australia, Armenia, Bahamas, and Belgium, you have put there in, even as you call it, they're in the data type string. If you don't do that, you'll get an error. So yeah, let's run uh, Belgium without putting it in, without putting it in quotation to see what happened. As you can see, a non call in Belgium in there were close, yeah? So it's cause it's a string. If you don't put it in string format, it will assume that's a column. It will go looking for a column like that, and that column doesn't exist, yeah? So mm -hmm, there you go. So in just enables you to specify whatever you want, yeah? So if you're interested in certain products, you could be like, where product equals to clothes or product in clothes, it's work, it works the same. The thing that makes in more convenient compared to equals to is within, you can state as many uh, data points that you're interested in. With equals, you'd have to be right, you'd have to, it will be really long. So it will be where country equals to Aust Austria and country equals to Armenia and country equals to Bahamas and country equals to Belgium. But it's so much easier if you would just do in and list them all at once. And then I guess another thing I can also add here is on top of in, there's also something called not in. So you could easily say not equals to, or you could be like not in. So like, mm, this is not a very good way to represent it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a CTE. So with data, okay, yeah, as open your brackets. Mm -hmm. So we want to select all from data where country not in <clears throat> so let's take Belgium and Bahamas okay so you can guess what's going to happen here oh so as you can see it printed, but it excluded Bahamas and Belgium. So not in works like like not equals to, but just like the advantage of in over equals, the advantage of not in over not equals to is, you can do a bunch of, you can do a really long list. Because the alternative to this would have been not equals to Bahamas and not equals to Belgium. So imagine if you had like 10 things you want to exclude, it's easier to just list them inside the brackets just before in, not in, instead of using not equals to several times, yeah? So yeah, so we're going to cover one more last logical operator for this specific tutorial. And then in the second, uh, in the second part of logical operators, we will cover the last batch of logical operators. And yeah, that will be it for introduction to logical operators in SQL, or should I say in SQL, yeah? yeah. So select only countries that have an inflation rate in the range of five to 15. So we can do select, or from where inflation between five and fifteen. Okay. So let's run this and see which countries. So as you can see, nothing should be above 15 and nothing should be below 5. But 5 and 15 are inclusive. So something could be equals to 5, something could be equals to 15. So yeah, that's how the between statement works. It just allows you to pick out <clears throat> a range. And I'd say this is a neater way to pick out a range, though 
<clears throat> you can use uh, greater than or equals to greater less than or equals to to do the same thing. But yeah, this is just this is cleaner. So yeah, so in case you're not so sure about what I'm talking about, and I say you can use greater than or equals to greater than or greater than or equals to less than or equals to. Uh, we covered that in the video that came before this. So the logical operators, I showed you how you could use greater than or equals to, uh, less than or equals to in place of between. Yeah. And I guess the only thing that would make uh, using comparison operators uh, uh, a better use case is when you don't want the ranges to be inclusive because between is inclusive. It will pick anything that is five, all the way to five greater than five, 15 greater than five. But if you want to pick anything greater than five and less than 15, then you'd have to use a comparison operator. But if anyone there knows any other way that you could get the range, but make it not inclusive, please let me know how to do it down in the comments below. And yeah, uh, that's it for this video. Yeah, thank you for staying to the end. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, if you did learn something new, feel free to like, let me know in the comments what you liked what else you'd want to see me cover yeah subscribe let's go along this journey together i have a bunch of tutorials waiting for you guys this is going to be a very long series it will probably have like 20 plus video videos yeah so i i, I don't know if i'm going to when i say 20 plus that is just like basic and intermediate when it comes to the advanced concepts i'm still thinking if i should have like a separate tutorial for it so like i had just have a separate series for windows function a separate series for sub queries i've not decided yet let me know what you think would you just want a very long tutorial with like 30 plus video videos or just keep it to 20 oh yeah but i think i'll keep it to like 2025 20, then we do a project that covers like basic and intermediate concepts then we get into like more advanced concepts and after that you can do another project. And yeah, if you have any data sets that you'd want to see me manipulating, creating a project using SQL, yeah, let me know down below so that I don't just create something that <laughs> I think you guys need, but something that you people will resonate with. Otherwise, guys, that's it for this video. And yeah, see you in the next one.